Good evening, everybody. This is Daryl. Welcome back. This is the uh, last live lecture, uh, uh, lecture we'll have uh, for this class. Four weeks by, runs by in quite a hurry. I guess most of you can tell that. Uh, I want to double check that everybody's hearing my voice and you're seeing the screen and everything is running fine. Uh, I don't think we're going to have any uh, hiccups today, but you never know. So um, somebody in, in chat just confirmed that uh, you're hearing and seeing everything fine and we can get going. Anybody hearing me? You hear me. All right. All right. I'm just being paranoid. Sorry. I've had enough, I've had enough, uh, technical problems this month just to be paranoid and uh, it never hurts. So uh, this, is the, this is the last lecture, this is the last week, and this week is devoted to feedback. So you guys turned in your uh, project to me and uh, I've been working on it. I haven't gotten everybody's feedback to everyone. I've got about halfway through. So if you haven't gotten your feedback yet, um, you will get it tomorrow. Uh, but I have very much liked what I've seen so far. You guys are very much on the right track and you're doing a terrific job. Um, so I've been spending the day uh, looking at, at um, projects and, and trying to give people feedback. And this entire week, we're going to devote to making our project better. So nobody starts over. We just, we're going to tinker. We're going to make it slightly better. This is about polishing that last 10%, that last 5%, that last 2%. Uh, this is the finishing work. And we're just going to get things right. Uh, so to that end, uh, the last reading that we have you doing is the final chapter of Resonate, so that you'll have read all of Resonate by the end of the month. And that final chapter appropriately deals with feedback and how to uh, uh, incorporate it into your work and how to, how to address it and so forth. So, um, we're going to spend the whole week thinking about this. Uh, I'm going to give you feedback on your project. You're going to have time to consider it and think about what you want to do. You have the option to change and make your better your program better. Everybody has to do something to the show. Even if I gave you 100% and I told you that I thought you did a terrific job, you're still obligated to make it better. No one gets to turn in last week's project as the final. You have to you have to change it somehow. You have to add a word, you have to add a slide, you have to um, take something out. You have to do something in the matter of uh, refining the project to make it better. This is the 2.0 version. And so um, as we finish, say goodbye to um, the words of Nancy Duarte, I want you to carry her with you. Uh, the stuff that we've mentioned here, we've mentioned a lot of sort of mean type tropes, you know, um, the audience is the, is the, uh, um, the king or the hero and, and so forth. And I want you to take that with you because this is not the last presentation you're going to make at Full Sail. This is just the first. So as you go forward, the words of Nancy Duarte, I think, will serve you well as you make different presentations. And each presentation you make is an opportunity to, to try a, new, a brand new form of storytelling, a brand new form of uh, using images to enhance text, a brand new form of, 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 of persuasion. So I want you to not only focus on what you're doing for yourself this month, but make sure you, you, you take a look at what all your classmates have done. And if you find interesting strategies for ways to tell stories, for ways to persuade, to, for ways to visually enhance uh, the narrative, take a note of it, put it in the back of your mind, and use it next time. You're going to make presentations over and over again. So you need lots of inspiration. You need lots of um, ideas and, and techniques that you can borrow. Uh, we're not gonna say steal because stuff that's out in the world, we see it, we can imitate it. Um, and so the ideas are there and you know, they're meant to be used and reused and reshaped and rethought and made better. And that's what feedback's all about. Uh, I did want to spend a few minutes talking about personal branding. You know, we've mentioned throughout this project that 
selling yourself to an employer is putting forth your brand. And you're gonna hear a lot about branding at Full Sail. Uh, Full Sail is dedicated not only to teaching you a skill, but to making sure that you're someone who uh, really knows how to operate and, and uh, make your, navigate your way through the professional working world. And that means promoting yourself. That means getting a job. That means networking. That means getting along with others. And the idea of selling yourself like a corporation, like a professional service, uh, comes into that. And that's what branding is all about. Branding is essentially your reputation, but it is a service or a, um, an idea or a vision that you offer to the world. It's all like a mission statement for yourself, as though companies have mission statements. Individuals can have mission statements about what it is they want to do, what they want to offer to people. And personal branding is your way of packaging those skills and making it easy for people to understand what they need to know about you. And in the internet world, your reputation sails halfway around the planet, sometimes without your even knowing about it. And uh, you have to be taking care of your brand because not only are your, um, your good exploits uh, promoted around the world, so are your uh, uh, missteps. And so you have to watch what you say. You have to make sure that you're always protecting your brand and uh, one of the ways of protecting your brand is looking at how corporations, what kind of efforts they put forward to manage their brands. And, and we can kind of do the same thing for ourselves. So a brand promise is basically a corporation stepping up and saying, this is what we offer the world. And it's not just as simple as, as saying what product category you're in. You're really talking about your company values. So different companies uh, offer things that are specific and peculiar to them. Google offers not only an immense curiosity, immense amount of information and, and data, you know, that they're a search engine to the world, but they also offer technical excellence, the, uh, an incredible uptime. Google's servers hardly ever go down because they are so uh, backed up and redundant and, and well cared for. And other companies like Amazon, they make brand promises. Amazon is an online reseller and their promise is not so much we sell everything or we sell the cheapest, but we make it the easiest in the world to buy from us. So every, every action that Amazon takes is to make it simpler to buy off the website uh, going beyond the website, they've introduced the uh, Eliza uh, Talk to It uh, home tools. So you can just say, uh, you know, Eliza, buy pickles, and that order goes through and gets sent. And they make it so easy to purchase from Amazon that um, even if they aren't the cheapest, even if there's a better deal somewhere else, you're going to go with Amazon because that's why it's so um simple. And uh, one of the things they've done is they've had an amazing focus on getting products to you fast. They used to be a company that sold books with headquarters in Seattle. So wherever you lived, there was a warehouse in Seattle that had to ship to you. And maybe if you lived in Seattle, it was pretty fast delivery. But if you lived in Florida, you're going all the way across the country. But since that beginning, Amazon has focused on having more and more warehouses, more distribution centers, so that wherever their customers are, that's where they're storing their product. And, and that equates to a quicker delivery to you. Uh, Amazon's not uh, happy about flying the book from Seattle to Florida, so they're smart enough to then make the warehouses in Florida so that uh, when you order that book, it's simply coming around the corner to you. And so Amazon has in greatly increased the number of places where they store their product just in order to get it to the customer's hands faster. It used to be that they could brag about two day delivery and then that became one day delivery and now it's same day delivery. So Amazon, uh, you know, uh, 
you almost think it's the next step is they're going to put products in your hand before you're ready to order it. They, uh, they know who you are and they know that you want this. So they'll, they'll, they'll bring it up in advance. So this is about brand promise. This is what, when you think about a company, when you think about its services, what are they offering you? And people can have brand services too, and you have to protect that. And the main thing is to be crystal clear about what is your offering and what you can and cannot do. You don't wanna be one of those people who gives fuzzy answers because you wanna have it both ways. You know something, but you, you, you haven't yet uh, accomplished it. Uh, you have to be very clear. You have to be very honest with people. So in protecting your brand, the first step is honesty. Be very uh, truthful about what you can do. Oftentimes when people go out for their first job and you know, an uh, employer will ask, you know, do you know Photoshop or do you know uh, Maya 3D? It's really easy to say yes when the real answer is no, thinking that you might go home and just watch a few YouTube editor uh, uh, information videos and, and pick it up. But that's always going to bite you. You know, be very, very truthful about what you can and cannot do. And then you never get caught in those uh, gaps. Because when you say you can do something and then you can't deliver, that becomes the problem. So you always want to be honest. You want to be unique. Um, most of you have come to Full Sail to study some broad topic. I want to be in filmmaking. I want to be in video game design. You know, I want to be an audio person. And as you go through your many, many classes, you're going to find that that translates into not a single skill, but a dozen to two or three dozen that uh, combinations of skills. And some of these things you're going to be better at than other people. Some of the things you won't be. So as you come into school, you have a broad notion of what uh, the industry you want to go into entails. But as you go through school, you have the opportunity to experience how well you can perform each and every one of those functions. And you may discover that you have talents for a specific thing, you know, yeah, you want to be a 3D designer, but it turns out that you're a absolute expert at rigging and that you really need to let creating characters uh, up to somebody else because then you can take those characters and you can make them move like nobody else. Or maybe you thought that you were a great video game designer, but it turns out that you're really, really good at tweaking game feedback and that uh, you can make the game experience better for other people who've designed the rules, but you can make those rules sing. So once you found out unique skills within your uh, uh, field, that you're really good at. Promote the hell out of it. Be unique. People are going to want the best. And when you find that you're really good at something, then that becomes the thing that's going to feed you for the rest of your life. So make sure you discover what you're unique at. You don't want to be average at everything. You want to find something that you excel at and that you're better than other people and you can promote that. And finally, uh, don't compromise. Very early in your career, it's very easy to just be really desperate and take a job that you know you shouldn't or uh, work for a level of pay that uh, is going to uh, set your rate at, at, at too low to, uh, to sustain. And it's very hard to say no, but you've got to learn to say no. You've got to be able to understand that saying no in a difficult circumstances will pay off in the end that it keeps you from going down a wrong path that it's hard to get corrected from. And this is all part of protecting who you are and what you want to be and what your brand is. So if you want to make a brand statement, these are the things that you have to think about. What is, you know, the service that you want to offer? It must be credible, it must come from a place of the heart of authenticity. It must kind of be like speaking in hail. It must be something that's truthful to you. Your brand promise is what you're really truly offering your customers and your, your colleagues and your clients. It must have value or benefit to the people you want to serve. It's no good if your brand promise is something that no one wants. 
uh, you'll, you'll be the expert at it, but you still won't have your phone ring. It must have a value to other people. And most importantly, promises are only good if they're kept. Your organization's storytelling, your brand story that you're creating in presentations like these only become powerful when the brand is clearly defined and you meet that goal and, and uh, it's, it's a clear notion that you're offering this and people want it. So that's what brand promises are all about. If uh, you're gonna learn a lot more about this as you go through full sale, uh, you're gonna get classes in you know, how to write resumes and how to do interviews and, and how to promote yourself through social media, et cetera. But it, these are skills that you have to learn and you should pay attention to them as you go through school uh, and learn these in the same way that you learn the skills about operating the software that you want to be proficient in. So um, start to think of what that service is. This is month one, nobody expects you to know all this stuff yet, but we're planting these seeds because these are questions that you need to get answered in the next several months as you go through school. Uh, and back to feedback. Uh, this week we have uh, you both receiving and giving feedback. We want you to be experts in giving feedback as well. So that's why we want you to have several opportunities to receive feedback. Everyone who turns in their project to me is going to receive feedback from me. Now, feedback from me is my suggestion for how you can make this better. It's not a commandment. Now, I may remind you that the, the uh, you know, maybe you didn't put a, a voiceover in your, in your uh, presentation and you have to put a voiceover in the presentation. That's part of the assignment. So I could, uh, I, uh, you can say I'm recommending it, but I'm recommending it because if you don't put it in, it's gonna hurt your grade. Uh, now, if I recommended that you speak with a British accent, that would just be me offering my opinion. And maybe you could pull it off and maybe a British accent would make your voiceover sound better, but that's an opinion that you can choose between. So uh, note that when you receive feedback from me, when I tell you stuff, you have to define between me reminding you that this is part of the brief, that you know, these, are, these are instructions and, 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 and uh, it it's not me suggesting that you do it, it's me telling you that that's part of what you need to accomplish and me giving you an opinion. If I think maybe you should speak louder, but you don't think you should, then you, you can ignore me. You, you do not have to follow everything I have to say. So when someone gives you feedback, it's part of your job to fully consider what they have to say, to give them your honest and full attention because they're doing you a favor by giving you feedback, but you do not have to follow their feedback. You have to consider their feedback. And once you've considered it, it's your decision whether to, to implement it or not. And so uh, there's, there are rules for giving and receiving feedback. And uh, we have asked all the students, if they wish to receive feedback from other students, to put your project in the 3.3 discussion board. It's gonna remain open through this whole week. So in addition to the, the week four activities that you're dealing with, you can go back and link into the 3.3 discussion uh, and, and see people who put their projects up. And if you wanna receive feedback yourself, then the best way to do that is to be someone who gives other people feedback. Fair is fair. Uh, we used to make it a part of the assignment and we would actually assign this student to give feedback to so-and-so. But because not all students come through on their projects, it, it was unfair because we would assign someone um, you know, a student to, to give them feedback and that student wouldn't show up and then that student was not receiving the feedback. So we've now made the student feedback completely voluntary. And I can't force anybody to give you feedback. If, if no one responds to you, I, you know, I'm sorry. But uh, the best way to work, this, this, we're all colleagues here, we're all helping each other. If you step up and give someone else feedback, then someone will step up and give you feedback. That's usually what I've found. It's uh, take a penny, leave a penny um, 
kind of thing. Uh, and so we want you to be able to give feedback fully. And so there are rules for both how to give and receive feedback. And we actually have an assignment for giving feedback because of course, although we can't force the people to participate in giving their colleagues feedback, we want to know that you have the ability to critique, that you have the ability to offer honest opinions about work and so forth. So we have an assignment 4.3. I'm going to get into that in a little bit, but that's an assignment where everyone has to just give a little bit of advice so that you have that experience. And so you'll have experience this week of both giving and receiving feedback. And so we actually have rules for giving and receiving feedback. I want to go through those real briefly and uh, uh, just talk about it. The first rule for giving feedback is create safety. And what that means is that you want to seek feedback in an atmosphere where you can feel that you trust what's being said. I would not recommend that you guys take your projects that you know that you've poured your heart into and that you want to make better and that you post them on Facebook or you post it at Reddit where people can come along and be anonymous and just be mean and say mean hurtful things because you know they're trolls that they're that no one sees them. There's a you know uh, there's a malice that grows up through anonymity in the internet and so you have to be careful. You have to work in spaces where you feel like there's a collegial um, protective cordon. And our, our discussion boards at school are that. Your colleagues have your best interests at heart. Your colleagues are all uh, people that you can trust. No one's going to say anything mean. No one has the ability to be anonymous. So if they did say something that was out of, out of bounds, you know, we'd find out about it and the GPS would go into effect. So this, the discussion board at school is a great place where you can lay your heart out and know that you're going to get advice from people who have your best interests at heart. When you get out into the working world, the company you work for becomes that protective space. Wherever you go and get hired in a creative industry, the people that you work with will have your back and they will be able to give you honest feedback. And uh, that's a protective space. So when we say create safety, we just want to make sure you're not um, seeking advice in areas where uh, you can get blindsided and, and uh, you know, just be thrown off track. Uh, the other thing is be positive. Now, positive doesn't say, mean only say nice things or only give compliments. It means only take about, only talk about things that are actionable. Meaning, if something can't be helped, if something is part of the assignment uh, and, and you don't like it, well, uh, that may be a complaint, but that's not something someone could do to make their project better. So you only want to talk about things that can be changed, that can be fixed, that can be uh, tweaked, and that are going to make the project more about what it needs to be. And along, along with that, you need to be specific. You need to give people enough information that they can make changes. For instance, it's a legitimate opinion for you to say, oh, I don't like your fonts. But that's useless information as feedback because no one knows where to go from there. But if you were to say, I think your fonts don't work. They're a little too thin and from far away, they're hard to read. I think you should use a thicker font and maybe choose this type of face, maybe a universe bowl or something like that. When you're giving specific suggestions, then the, the user who's receiving that feedback can make a judgment about whether or not it makes sense for them to make that change. But without specifics, uh, they just know that you don't like something and they don't know how to fix that. So you've got to give them instructions that are actionable and specific that allow them to uh, you know, make the changes. And it's on you to give that advice. That's the whole essence of feedback. Be immediate. If someone asks for your opinion and you can't uh, tell them right then and there, find out what their time frame is because it's no secret to know that all of us right now and for the rest of our lives because we've chosen these industries 
are going to be on deadline. There isn't a project that says, oh, whenever you want to feel like finishing, it's okay. Everything has a deadline. And if someone is asking you for feedback, they're usually trying to get something fixed or changed on a deadline. And there's nothing worse than receiving really terrific advice after it's too late to use. So if, if you can't respond to someone immediately, find out what their time frame is so that they can get that advice, that feedback in time to make the change. For our instances here, if people are posting their, their projects today and tomorrow, and they're up on, this, on the bulletin board, on the discussion board through the week, then most of you should try to get your feedback in by Thursday or Friday so that the person who posted it can find that feedback and have a couple of days over the weekend, the Saturday and Sunday, to get that implemented. You don't want to give someone feedback on 9.30 on Sunday night because that's too late for them to implement it. And, that, you know, if it's terrible feedback, it won't matter. But if it was great feedback, they'd really resent not having it earlier uh, when they could have used it and could have made the project better. So be immediate, be aware of other people's timelines and deadlines. And finally, provide tough love. We're all here to support each other. We all want to make each other better. But if someone is really wrong, if someone's really missed the boat, if they're headed in the wrong direction, you're not doing them any favors by not saying anything about it. They're eventually going to find out and they're going to have just lost more time. If you're a friend, you're going to tell them the hard truth. Uh, it's, it's, going to, it's going to hurt less coming from you. Certainly hurt, le hurt less coming from you than from the client. And um, you're, you're going to save them that much more time on getting turned around. And if you're a friend, there's a way to say these things that aren't so mean that you'll know, they'll know you have your best interests in heart. But if someone is very, very wrong, don't humor them, let them know you're, you're doing them a favor. And if they refuse to hear, then you've, you've, you've given it a try. And uh, uh, you don't have to uh, go back again and again to prove them wrong. If, if, if they uh, re reject your advice the first time, your feedback the first time, you're not in any, under obliga any obligation to uh, force them to see the truth. So what are the rules for receiving feedback? All right, well, first rule, create a growth mindset. Now what that means is that you really have to listen to the feedback. People are doing you a favor. If, if someone's gonna step up and look at your project and give you their opinion, you know, that is a service, that is a friendship to you. And so you have to listen to their whole opinion. Oftentimes people say they want feedback. Well, what they really are, is they're fishing for compliments. And one of the things that a lot of people do, a lot, this, is, this is something students are very, very guilty of, and you should, you should cure yourself of this habit, even if you're trying to do it this month, cure yourself of this habit, that they seek feedback but before they allow anyone to say, they list off a thousand things that are wrong with the project as if pre-arming themselves against these defenses. First of all, if you hadn't mentioned some of this stuff, a lot of people wouldn't even notice it. So you're actually pointing out problems to people that aren't necessarily going to see it. And uh, there's no advantage to you in, in letting them know that stuff ahead of time. And oftentimes, as soon as someone starts to mention something, like someone might say, well, I think your audio was a little little low and you'll jump in and say, oh yeah, that was not my fault. That was the microphone. I had a really crummy microphone. I was hoping to get a better one, but blah, blah, blah. Well, your excuse may be a fine excuse, but what the other person heard is, shut up, I don't value your opinion. If someone is gonna offer you feedback and you start, they start to give you feedback and you cut them off, that is rude. You need to hold your tongue and let them ex, uh, give you their complete full thought. There may be mitigating circumstances. There may be something that you want them to know, but cutting someone off before they finish giving you their feedback is uh, um, a rude thing to do. It's disrespectful and it's telling people that I don't really value your opinion. So you've got to be able to, to, to sit there and let everyone 
say they're due. And then afterwards, there may be time to change the opinion. And in fact, if, you, if someone is mentioned something that you're aware of, then own it. Take credit for your mistakes. That becomes a bonding moment. But you've got to let the other person complete that thought because that's your respect for them. But if you take credit for your mistakes, if you understand, uh, then it, it means that both of you are looking at the project in the same way. It's actually a kind of bonding moment at that point. But you, you can't do it ahead of time. You can't be defensive about it. If you are truly seeking feedback, then let people point these things out. Uh, even if you knew it was coming, you want to hear them say it in the first place. Uh, focus on self-improvement. Now, in this case, it means that when you offer your work out to a lot of other people, they're all going to look at the things that matter to them. You know, uh, is there a balloon in it? What color is the dog? Some of these things don't matter to you. And that's fine. If these people are giving you their opinion, you can t helpful, you can uh, happily take their opinion and it becomes irrelevant to you fixing or changing the project. That's just extra information. You focus on the things that you're looking for feedback on. And when those things align, then that's where you're going to get uh, information that will help you make your project better. But you're going to find when you ask for feedback that you're going to get all kinds of opinions about all kinds of different things. And uh, the fact that you weren't thinking about it, sometimes it means you should think about it. Sometimes it just means that you know, people look at the world differently and, and you need to focus in on, on the things that are important to you. Uh, learn from criticism. Sometimes there's not a reconciliation here, you know. Uh, you made it brown and the other person likes it blue and that's just who they are and who you are. And, and it's information for you, for the world, but it doesn't necessarily mean that you're right or they're right and you can't possibly know. So. Criticism is there to inform you. It's there to give you a guide. It can't tell you who's right. Uh, and since it's your project, you have to decide. You know, if you like brown and they like blue, well, you're the pro it's your project. You like brown, it should be brown. Uh, if, if you ask 10 people and nine people say blue and, and you're the only brown, then maybe you should question yourself. But uh, if, you're, if you're just taking one-on-one, -on -one, uh, it's, it's really about, can these opinions help me, inform me about what I should do about my work? Uh, and finally, find lessons and inspiration in the success of others. We all want each other to succeed. So if you find something in someone's work that uh, you really enjoy or you really like, you know, analyze that, internalize that, and, and store it away in your, uh, your secret box for the next time when you have to do a project. Well, these are all ways that we can help each other get better. So uh, in terms of giving feedback, we have an assignment called 4.3. Um, it's the presentation feedback assignment. It's a pretty straightforward name there. And uh, what we've done is we've taken three student uh, uh, 4.3s, we've gotten their permission, and we put them on YouTube. And these are three pretty good projects. They're not perfect, but they're, you know, they're a good start. They could use some help. So we want you to watch all three and then pick one. This is, this is an assignment that's very much like the week one, 1 1.4 TED Talk. This is a written assignment. And so you only need to pick one of the three projects and you need to tell me what you like about it and what you didn't like about it. And, and you have to give that student some actionable, correctable, changeable advice, whether it's about their vocal performance or the way their slides look or the, the story they're telling or you know the pace or any number of things that you can comment on. But anything that you can tell that student to make that project better, I want you to put it in there. So this is a written assignment. I want you to write about two paragraphs on one example. And we have a series of prompts here. So these are the questions that you can ask and answer yourself in those two paragraphs. What did you like about the presentation? You know, what was difficult to follow? Uh, you know, what advice do you give them? What techniques or qualities does this exemplify? And from last week, 
which of the three pillars of this presentation does this presentation appeal to? Ethos, pathos, or logos? So that's just a little way for us to know whether or not you're kind of plugged into what these mean. But for the most part, what I'm really looking for is for you to say what you like and didn't like about the project and give that student some good, useful advice in one or two paragraphs. And then finally, add a third paragraph talking about uh, what feedback means to you, how you would use feedback to make your own work better. So it's really about how, what, what do you feel like feedback's useful for? And who are you to ask and what kind of questions would you ask them? So um, this is a written text document. Again, two or three paragraphs. You can write it up in Word or text file and upload it. You can even put it in the, in the feedback box if you like. So either way is fine. Um, but, um, you know, just give us uh, one student film with your advice on it. And, uh, you know, um, I don't need you to spend a whole lot of time on this, but don't blow it off. Give it some thought and give us your opinions. And again, this is due on Sunday, so it's not going to take a whole lot of time and you should be able to get it done by the end of the week, no problem. And the, the final thing is your final project. And so, uh, like we said, uh, the final project has to be changed in some fashion. It doesn't have to be changed in any particular amount. It doesn't have to be 10% changed or 30% changed or you have to add four more pictures. There's no set amount of fixing or unfixing. If you turned in a rough draft that was super rough, maybe you got a lot of fixing to do. But if you turned in a rough draft that was, you know, perfect or nearly perfect, then all we're wanting to do is to tweak it a little bit better. This is the time of reflection. You now that you've done the hard work, you can look at it, you can think about it again, and you can just figure out what is the one or two things I could do to really put a cherry on top of this Sunday. And so, uh, we want you to turn in the final version. We, we want uh, a few specifics about the final version. We want it to be self-running. So the rough draft could be a, a PowerPoint file that I had to click to play the audio or click to advance the slides or anything like that. The final version of, the, uh, of this project needs to be self-running. It can still be a PowerPoint file. You don't have to actually turn it into a video, although we recommend that you turn it into a video. But if you turn in the PowerPoint file, I need to open it up. And as soon as I open it up, everything plays. The audio plays automatically, the slides advance automatically, and so forth. If you don't know how to make that happen, get a hold of me this week, and I will help you get all the, the, the uh, syncing and playback done. But as a final project, the audience should not have to click and engage and go forward. There should just be sitting there as the audience, as the entire project plays. And the easiest way to make that happen is to turn it into a movie. Uh, Adobe Spark exports as an MPEG-4 movie, uh, easiest thing in the world. Uh, PowerPoint files can be exported as a movie. Sometimes they're a little tricky to do that, but uh, if you've done everything in the correct order, uh, exporting the PowerPoint as a, a movie should not be a problem. And then if you put it, at, if you've exported it as a movie, another great final step is to put it on YouTube. Now this is not required, but it's a great suggestion that uh, you using YouTube as a way to archive your work. You don't have to make it public to everybody. You, you actually have several settings in uh, um, on YouTube in which you could just simply use it for your own personal archive. But as you go through school, as you finish different projects, it's a great way to archive your work. Instead of leaving everything on your computer, when you finish a project, you put it online and you can keep it hidden from the rest of the world if you like. But when you suddenly meet somebody that you wanna share your project with, instead of a you know, 400 megabyte movie file that you have to send them, you just send them a link to YouTube and it and becomes an easy way to share your work and an easy way to archive your work. Uh, and it's free. So there's uh, lots of advantages there. Um, also, one last thing in the final is that we want you to include with the project what we're calling a changes list, which means just 
write down what you changed from version 1.1 to 2.0, oh, or you know, from 3.4 to 4.4. What did, you, what did you do different from one file to the other? Just write it down briefly, put it in a text file. You can actually put it in feedback if you like. It, does, it should not be part of the movie itself. Um, you have the option to put credits for your images on a final slide or on an external document, but the changes list needs to be an external document. It should not be in the project itself. It should just be an external text file, or ideally it's just a note that you give us in the feedback box, because all we're looking to do is for you to have listed what you changed so we can have you in enunciated. But you will lose points if you do not include a changes list. So either as a separate text file or a feedback message, you need to give me a changes list along with the final project, which again is due on Sunday night. So this being the last week of class, what happens is that uh, class ends on Sunday night at midnight. The project is due. Uh, if you need more time, let me know. I can extend it. You can turn it in late and have a few extra days. But if you turn it in on time and the project ends, then your class, your first class is over Sunday at midnight. And what happens after that is that a minute later, at 12.31 on Monday morning, your next class opens up and it's available in the same way that you first got to this class in the upper left-hand corner of Full Sail 1. Uh, so the next class for most of you is going to be PYP, the Psychology of Play. It's a very cool uh, class about psychological processes and work play balance and time management. A lot of you are going to find it very helpful and useful. Um, and it opens up Monday morning and uh, will run for the next month. So this is the way classes work here at Full Sail. One class ends, the next class immediately opens up a minute later. Now you're still going to have access to this class for about two weeks after this class ends. So if you want to turn in something late, if you need to come back and check your, your uh, grades or their messages or inf things that you need to deal with, you're going to be able to come back here before we finalize the grades. But somewhere around two weeks after this class ends, the grades will get posted at a final version and you will lose access to this class. You're only accessing your currently available class and you're accessing your previously finished class for a week or two after it's done. Uh, so we will uh, finish this class and uh, next week, uh, a new class begins, and that'll be your December term. And uh, there's going to be a Thanksgiving break in there. I don't know if that's next week or the week after. I think Thanksgiving break is the week after. So you might have a first full week before you actually uh, take the Thanksgiving break. But um, the, the December class will run to about December 20th. I don't know the exact termination date. I don't have a calendar in front of me, but um, there'll be a, a, like a, a two week break for Christmas and then January starts up. So that's just the way the schedule goes. You're gonna end up having a break between the December and January terms for Christmas. But for the most part, each class replaces the next. And thus on to the end in an accelerated fashion. This is your new career here at Full Sail. I hope you're all gonna do well. I, I, I really imagine that you will. Uh, do we have any questions? You guys have been quiet here. I don't know if I've bored you to death or uh, gone over your heads or answered your questions. So I'd just like to get some feedback. Does anybody need any help with anything? Does anybody need any help with um, PowerPoint programming or, or exporting videos out of different projects and so forth. Uh, this is the class that I teach. You have other classes, other teachers that, that teach classes beyond this. And you're gonna have lots of instructors, but uh, I only teach this class. So uh, I'm, I'm gonna stay here till I teach another. You, you can only teach one class so long, I mean, Month after month, I taught digital video for eight years and 
then I needed to change. I'm not ready for a change yet, but I'm, this is the only class that I teach. Uh, Sharman, I need help with the movie thing in PowerPoint. Uh, okay, the, um, I'll work, give me a call. Give me a message and I will give you a call. Uh, exporting a movie out of PowerPoint, uh, a lot of it has to do with the media that you choose and the way that you've got it set up. Because if you're linking to an external file or you have a kind of audio file that doesn't easily go into a movie format, it can give you hiccups. But if you're using the right kind of audio and, and uh, you have the latest version of PowerPoint, uh, you can export it as a movie uh, as long as you've got all the syncs set up. Uh, you're using your phone. Well, PowerPoint doesn't, um, PowerPoint doesn't support audio on the phone, so that can be an issue. But if you're, if you're using your phone and you're creating something in PowerPoint, uh, you can use us as your uh, conversion tools. You know, you can export a PowerPoint file to me and an audio file to me, and I can export it in the way that you want it because I have a, a, a good working desktop. So part of the way we're going to solve some of these issues uh, for people who are on the phone or they have different versions of software or things like that is that, uh, you know, I can provide some conversions and, and uh, uh, exports and things. So let me know if you're having that issue. Um, we're not going to solve it here in the class, but contact me after the class and I'll work with each of you individually. I've got the whole week and that's uh, something that I want to get done for everybody. So anybody else? Any other questions? Well, if not, I'm going to let you guys go. Uh, there's no need to keep you on extra long, but uh, you guys have a really great week and you guys have a really great career here at Full Sail. You've been a terrific class and I think you're all destined for, for bigger things. I think you're doing really well. So everybody have a great time and uh, I'll see you guys around. Uh, when do we have to bring in the essay? Uh, uh, everything's due Sunday night. So one of the things I meant, I forgot to mention, uh, the last thing here is portfolio competency. It is actually uh, a survey of, of asking how well you did this class you're not really you're not really critiquing the class you're critiquing yourself you're just telling us you know what did you expect you know how do you feel like you did so on and so forth but um this is a zero weight assignment but we expect you to do it for us we expect you to turn it in for us so please turn it in uh and it's due on sunday night the same as everything else uh any more questions? Going once, going twice. All right, good night, everybody. You guys have a great career. Thanks.